You got something in your ear. No, I'm st- mm-hmm. I still have the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Today, on the program, we will be covering the peanut butter falcon. Mm-hmm. Five lessons in particular that we noticed and we'd like to uh, talk about from the movie. Lesson number one. <laughs> Don't let your weaknesses define you. Yeah. yeah. Do not let your weaknesses define weaknesses you. Weaknesses leading, you know, any kind of stuff you struggle with, right? Don't use that as a crutch or an excuse to maybe not strive for something that you that you want in your life. For example, one of the weaknesses that you could think of is like, um, or some some of the things that you, you could interpret as a weakness mm-hmm. are having a disability. Right. Or being a minority, if that's an example. Don't let, let these things define you and determine how you're existing in life. Yeah. yeah. And then lesson number two. Family. Yeah. yeah. Everyone needs family. Everyone needs a family. Yeah. Like it or not. Yeah. And, and it's a big, big, and we'll big talk, one. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. mean, obviously, the movie reflects on types of family, yeah. right? So yeah. let's say your biological family is not the best. You know, can you Good. still have a family? Yes. We flesh that, flesh that out yeah. later. Stay tuned. Number three. Different backgrounds. Different backgrounds don't necessarily mean you won't be able to connect. Connect. And yeah. Get along. Yeah. And become friendlies. Yeah. Yeah. And then number four. Par example. <laughs> yeah. Par example. <laughs> and then number four is sometimes people who come who are struggling. Right. Um. Cut each other down right. or hold each other back right. yeah yeah as well as as trying not to let you try not to let your own weaknesses define you and to hold you back then you also have to try to avoid not having other people hold you back yeah, yeah. and then number five is as you're moving through life remember to tap into your oh yeah th- your inner child yeah always. always this is how you will survive life yes <laughs> tapping into your inner child you must it's you a must, must to, <laughs> to avoid Becoming numb yeah. everywhere. Yeah. In your fingers, in your brain, everywhere. To avoid joint pain. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And brain pain. <laughs> bing, um, bang, bong, bong, boom. Okay. Yeah. We'll get better at um, just like. <laughs> yeah, we're know, doing. We're trying to structure we're trying it. We're trying to structure it a bit. It might not seem know, that way. Because I know that I feel like we've talked about this. You said mm-hmm. that we have this tendency to be a bit rambly. So. Yeah. As we are right now, yes. being rambly, so let's just... One of our weaknesses, we're trying not to let it define us. Yeah, yeah. it's exactly. We're trying not to let us define. We're working yes. through these weaknesses. Yes. Okay, yes. so number one... Is don't let your weaknesses define don't you. Don't let your weaknesses define you. So if you're a bit okay. rambly and a bit ranty, work towards how can you structure things so yeah. that you're not all over the place. Yeah. As an example. In, in the case of uh, Peanut Butter Falcon, yeah. We didn't even explain the movie. I thought you didn't want to do that. Oh, you don't want to do the brief synopsis. Well, I didn't want to do the 20 oh, second okay. thing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we're going to have to cut this because otherwise it's a rival. People are going to get annoyed. I know. Uh, young, 20 something odd, 22, 23 year old uh, man with Down syndrome, Zach, breaks out of. Uh, he's in an old age home. It's not really a good fit, but I guess where he's in a small town in the States, they don't have the resources to properly house him. His parents abandoned him, so he's. The found state him. put him there. The state put him there. Uh, but he escaped because. You know, he wants to live. He has that that drive uh, to actually, you know, live a life and not be stuck. Surrounded with old people. Yeah, well, he knows he doesn't belong there. And then he comes across Tyler, who's down on his luck. Down on his luck, dude. Um, His brother passed away, and he uh, is now trying to make a living uh, catching fish and shellfish, I believe. Lobsters and such. Uh, But there's a feud going on with him and some other uh, fishermen. And so he's on the run, they meet up, they become friends, and uh, it's about their adventure and learning to become a family together. Yeah. And along the way, uh, Zach's caregiver is trying to track him down because of her boss telling her so. She finds them, and then she gets forced because Zach chucks her keys in the water. She has to carry on on their adventure with them, and uh, it's the story of them three learning yeah. To, uh, yeah, to enjoy yeah. life and become a family. Back to theme num- to the lesson number one, which yeah. was don't let your uh, weaknesses define you. Right. So it's not to say that having um, a disability is a weakness, like the one that um, that Zach has. He he's he has uh, Down syndrome. It's not to say that he has a weakness per se, but the way that the world is set up, right? You have a person. There's a 
there is an archetype of the kind of person who is perfectly functional for the various systems in the world, right? And uh, unfortunately, Zach isn't one of those people. Work, uh, school, whatever, yeah. you name it. it. It's just easier for certain people because everything is structured according to, let's say, their own culture or their, the more dominant culture. Yeah. So in that way, it, it's easier for you to navigate life because you come from this culture that the world that you live in is based on, right? So what does that mean? That makes that then means, um, according to the world, it means that you are weak. You are seen as you know the weak person who like no one is wants to be to work with you because you're going to pull them back, right? Yeah. Things like that, and it's perceived to be a burden. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Realistically, things will be harder for you if mm-hmm. you are Zach and if you are any other kind of. Um, let's say if, if you're any other minority, right? Like mm-hmm. if you are not the person that you, the, the environment you're living in is structured around, your life is definitely like mm-hmm. no, make no mistake. It's going to be, be harder. So that is your weakness. Yeah. But don't let that define you. Don't embrace it. Don't succumb to it. Mm-hmm. Right. As much as, and it's not to say that it's not hard. It's, it's mm-hmm. definitely going to be hard. But it's also going to be harder to sit back and see other people Mm -hmm. existing through life, you know, coasting through life and enjoying the fruits of life. And you are not allowed. You're not able to do that. It's not fun. No, it's hard either way. Yeah, it's hard either way. So, yeah. Can you maybe be so passionate about the thing you're you're striving for that it encourages other people to to want to see it happen for you or to see uh, that they could also make their own ambitions happen, too? Yeah. Yeah. And I think the other part of not allowing your weaknesses to define you is that you, you we live in a world where people are so incredibly accommodated, accommodating. We've touched on this before, you know, where, for example, minorities, because people are aware of the fact that minorities have certain challenges, then they're kind of walking on eggshells around them. Right. So that's an example of um, where, you know, like you are if you are um succumbing to that kind of treatment um it can also often be inadvertently you allowing your weaknesses to define you because for example in the movie zach is treated differently by the caregiver right um and by tyler the guy the guy that the runaway that they that he befriends and and tyler treats Zach like a dude you know he's he's not concerned about him being disabled um disabled or having uh, down syndrome and I think the thing with Zach as well with Tyler is that he obviously himself comes from a disadvantaged background and so he's very well attuned to the fact that your weaknesses you know like you have you you have struggles and there's nothing you can do life is life life is happening it's not going to you slow down for you so you have to push on yeah. and so he treats zach that way he's not trying to coddle him or anything yeah. but the caregiver who does come from a more privileged background does try to coddle him i remember when after zach throws uh, her keys in the ocean and now they're she's kind of forced to travel with them um he's like well honey you you're probably hungry right now I, maybe we should your blood sugar is probably low we should get you something to eat i think i have some m M&M, ms you want some m ms and, and and then Tyler's like, don't do that. Don't do that. He, he's a man. He's, he's not a baby. He's, he's 22. Yeah. Don't do that. And he's like, what do you mean? And, and he's like, you know, you like to say that you you respect um, Zach and you treat, you, you like, or that you treat him re- with respect, but you, the way that you... Your actions betray that. Yeah, your actions yeah. betray that. Another thing, too, when you, you carry too much weight with uh, the each your individual hurdles that you were given to have to overcome is then people start to compare to like, well, I had this hurdle to overcome. I had this hurdle to overcome. Yeah. At the end of the day, we all have stuff we have to exactly. work on through life and, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and help each other out as best you can. But, you know, it's tempting to use it as a crutch and then also to resent people that if you feel like yeah. uh, you make a, an assumption, you say, well, they didn't have as big a hurdle. Yeah. You know, and then you start resenting people and then start justifying your lack of action to get yeah. over your hurdles because they're like, well... It seems like they didn't have a very big hurdle, even though it might be a huge one. You don't know. Exactly. Yeah. So instead of just, instead of spending the energy trying to figure out each other's sizes hurdles, just work on your hurdle. Focus yeah, on your hurdle. Focus on your yeah. hurdle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because that's the other thing, right? Whenever you're. Focus- that's what hurdlers would say. <laughs> Oh, is that what they're called? Yeah. Like whenever you're focusing on your weaknesses, right? That's the thing. You you don't take it's you use it as an excuse. You don't want to take action, but then you allow yourself to 
you know, not taking an excuse. So you just kind of, you, you exempt yourself from the responsibilities mm -hmm. of life, right? You say, well, I can't do that because of ABC. Okay, so... Lesson number two. Um... <laughs> family. 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 We all need family. Yeah. At one point in the beginning of the film, as Zack makes his daring escape, uh, the old man he's living with, his roommate, helps him escape. And they basically have this exchange where, you know, he's helping him out because he sees that Zack does not belong there and he needs to live his life and so he's willing to help him out. And they're pretty close because of that and they get to know each other. And he basically says, you know, like, well, friends are the family you choose. And so he's saying, you know, we're family in a sense. And then Zack says, you're invited to my birthday party. It's very sweet. Yeah, it's okay. And then he escapes. And, uh, and that's what, and that's one of the themes of the movie is that, you know, the three of them, as they find each other, you know, Zack, Tyler, I forget her name. The yeah, caregiver. forget her name. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, they, uh, we'll put it up here. They, they become a family because they are all looking, and we, we were trying to find ways of kind of defining a family and why people, everyone needs a family. And we, we find it as that a family of any, you know, whatever, it, whatever it's made of, um, are a group of people. And it's people that give you support, yeah. but people that also you can lean on. So you can get re reciprocal support yeah. back and forth. Of course, I mean, love. Um, they, they truly see you. They listen to you. They want to see you thrive and grow and, and challenge you, you know? Yeah. Family yeah. should never be transactional That's whatsoever. True. That's yeah. True. Family, is, in theory, is supposed to be the opposite of like a workplace. It's the opposite yeah. of a transactional relationship. It's one where everyone can be vulnerable, keep in touch with people in a way so that you understand and know the person as they go through life. So when the world is cold and hard and doesn't care about you, family, those are the people that still know you, that they'll, you know, and they'll remember you and they'll care about you. Yeah. yeah. To really, truly care for someone, yeah. um, it can be one of the most rewarding thing. Yeah. Um, one of most the most rewarding things in life. Number three. Just because you came from a different background from someone else doesn't mean that uh, you're not able to form a connection with them. Yeah. It's interesting. We were talking earlier about how we used to think that in order to find friends that are perfect for us, mm. we would probably enjoy the company of, you know, eclectic type of people <laughs> who are not, you know, I don't know, bogged not, down not, by not dogma. By the, yeah, by the... <laughs> Machine. <laughs> yeah, by the machine. <laughs> but now I'm realizing that, you know, that is the farthest thing from the reality. I used to look at people, for example, like who'd wa who work on Wall Street. I'm sorry if you work on Wall Street, but I've changed my ways, right? And I would, I would think I would never be friends with someone who works there. You know, like to work at that at a place like that, you'd have to have a certain kind of mindset. Attract someone. Yeah, yeah. Like I, would, I don't even know what kind of conversation we'd have, but I... No, I now know that is not even, it, it does not work mm. at all that way. In every community, in every workplace, I think you're going to have the same kind of mix of people. You're going to have the person that's just doing it for the paycheck, the person that believes in it and wants to change the world to do it by doing that work, and the other person that's uh, the wise, sagely type, yeah. and the other that's just the out for themselves type, screw everyone else, you know, uh, whatever it takes. Yeah, but you're still in that one community. Yeah, but it doesn't never, mean yeah. it doesn't mean that you are actually um, you you could actually become friends or close mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. However, then you meet someone from like completely foreign yeah. place you've never even heard of. A whole other country. A whole other country. They came from a completely different background. But oh my god, this person! It's as though you're seeing yourself. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And it's insanity. Yeah. Because yeah. how on earth does that happen, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you have similar points of references, mm -hmm. like, and it's just insane because you live in another country, you ca you came from a different family, yeah. and yet we speak the same language. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's what I've learned. Yeah. And so just because, so you in this can, movie, you can you can be friends with someone for decades and feel like you don't even know each other, and you can meet someone yesterday and yeah. feel like you've known them your whole lives. Yeah. Yeah. And so the reason we talk about this as a lesson in the movie, um, Tyler and Eleanor, they end up getting together. You know, Eleanor comes from a very privileged background and 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 Tyler, t absolutely the opposite. And they end up together. Lesson number four. Lesson number four is people that come from, that, no, 
Yeah, people that... Struggling people easy. often take it out on other struggling people. Yeah. yeah, and try to cut each other down. Yeah, and it could be for any way that you could be struggling, right? Poverty. Yeah. Poverty, so financial, emotionally struggling people. Maybe you're not physically cool, part struggling, of the cool club. Not part of any... Yeah, the cool club. <laughs> uh, people that struggle to be fit will also, you know, yeah. knock people down or make, uh, make fun of other people that are struggling to get into better shape. Right? Yeah. Or, or for whatever it is, looking yeah. good... Whether it's with, I don't know, your, your get-ups, you know, the clothes you wear, the makeup you use, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, like, whatever it is that you perceive as a weakness, because yeah. all of these things that we listed, they yeah. aren't necessarily a weakness no. or a bad thing. No. We look at things differently, yeah. right? And obviously, it's because of so uh, socialization. Yeah. Pressures, societal pressures, mm -hmm. how we grew up. So some, for example, in some parts of the world like for example we talk about like you know people who are going to work out and stuff like in some part of, parts of the world being bigger um in terms of your weight right. is more attractive right. than being skinner right. skinnier skinnier yeah. but like in the west yeah. being skinny is more is idolized mm -hmm. right so so wherever you are obviously yeah. like these things that are per, you know perceived yeah. to be a negative yeah they aren't yeah. you know yeah, like they are, they are not hard, fast, negative mm -hmm. things. There is no, yeah. they're not facts. Yeah. However, so if people are living in a certain society or um, wherever they are, these things that they, that are part of them, mm -hmm. um, if they are a weakness and they have other friends, for example, or they're in a community of people that are yeah. mutually struggling with yeah. this thing that is supposed yeah. to be supposedly a weakness. Yeah. When, when one of these people starts yeah. to work against it, yeah. it's like, okay, I'm going to do something about it because yeah. I don't want to be yeah. seen as less than anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to work really hard to make yeah. sure that I don't, you know, to, to fix this about myself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, the other people that are in the same position as yeah. that they are, yeah. they don't necessarily, a lot of the times they struggle you yeah. know, there's envy, uh, there's jealousy. They don't want that person to succeed. Yeah. They want to cut them down. And so yeah. they'll say things like, oh, well, you know, you're never going to do that. Is this way too hard? Mm -hmm. Is this cost too much yeah. money? How are you going to, are you going to work yeah. two jobs? You or know, like never whatever. Done this before. Excuses. Yeah. Yeah. Someone wants to stop smoking. All their smoker friends. Yeah. I mean, that's going to make them have Come to think on, about man. what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. the thing, right? Mm -hmm. People, a lot of the times when um, they do cut you down, it's because it's just that thing that reminds them that there, it, it's not anything external to themselves yeah. that is forcing that this weakness that they or the perceived yeah. weakness um, on themselves, yeah. and that and, and they they are forced to reconcile with the fact that they can actually yeah. do something about like, it oh, if they wanted to. A lot of this you know is just I mean? a choice. Yeah, because like as again, you know, I reiter reiterate that we there is no. Um, there's never, it's, there's no truth to anything being a weakness, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if you truly feel that it is a weakness for you, uh, for, for you like if you, you truly feel like, I don't like this, I don't enjoy existing this way, then that's something that you have to change for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't like it, you have to do something about mm -hmm. it, right? And so um, if someone else is trying to do something about it and you aren't, you uh, sometimes people who aren't doing the work, you know, instead of saying, okay, you know what? I, I want this, per I want to be, do what this person is doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should go talk to them and find out, you know mm -hmm. what, what it is it that you, where are you getting all the stamina? Mm -hmm. What is it that you yeah. did? Help me out. Show me the way. Mm -hmm. Instead of that, a lot of the times people cut each other down. Mm -hmm. They try to pull the person down instead of just asking, because I mm -hmm. feel like if you do see some, if you are the kind of person who's trying to cut someone down, I think that the reality is you are envious of this thing that the person wants. You want it yourself. Mm -hmm. So why don't you focus on the fact that, accept that, you know, I want it. Mm -hmm. So let me ask the person instead yeah. of pulling them back. Yeah. To, I, I think people are also bombarded all the time with being reminded that they are less. I mean, a lot of times it's, it's, it's intentional, you know, uh, to make mo get money out of people. You got to make them feel less than. You got to make them feel bad about themselves yeah. to sell them stuff. So they're getting enough of that as it is. So they don't want to see it with the people they at least get to spend time with. If that starts to happen there too, then there's no escape from feeling less than or yeah. bad about themselves. So, yeah. you know, the, uh, it's understandable. It's a hard cycle, yeah. But I think at the end of the day, you have two choices. You have to, you either accept where you are and who you are and you learn to love yourself as you are. Mm -hmm. But if you can't and you truly don't like yourself as you are and you truly just cannot settle in your reality, what does that mean? It means 
you should be changing it, mm-hmm. right? But the problem is, it, is it, it, the problem starts where you see other people doing it and then you start to, you know, like you start to, to try to cut them down because maybe you, you know how hard it is to make the change and you don't want to make the change. Mm-hmm. And so then you make excuses that, well, it's not my fault, really. It's the world that mm-hmm. makes that made me this way. Mm-hmm. But if you see someone else who's in your exact same position doing it for themselves and pulling themselves out of it themselves mm-hmm. and not waiting on someone else to give them a bone, throw them a bone, it reminds you that the fact that you are in the, the position that you're in yeah. is Primarily because of you, yeah. because you don't want to do anything about it, and that's really hard yeah. to take account. You know, to, to for take for your reality for yourself and yeah. to rise the occasion. It's not easy. That's really hard. It is. Yeah. yeah. Fifth and final lesson. Live is. life. Oh yes, uh, yes. Hold on to the childlike qualities that you had as a kid, your inner child. Yeah. The positive aspects of being a child. Again, holding on to the curiosity, the imagination. Optimism. Optimism. Being inspired by things, I think, is a good thing. Having hope to be playful, you know, to not take things so seriously, to connect with other people. You have to be open like a kid and playful to connect with other people. It's important. The reason I, I, I really enjoyed that lesson from the movie is because, you know, children are very curious, right? They haven't been tainted by the world, Mm -hmm. right? So everything is new. There's just, everything is exciting. There's a lot of hope, Mm -hmm. right? You don't expect that anybody is bad. You don't even, you can't even tell. You don't Mm -hmm. even have, you can't even tell that this person is bad. This person is good just from looking at them, you know, as a kid. So you're just living through, you're living life with just so much openness Mm -hmm. in your heart Mm -hmm. as a kid. I definitely do think that living as your inner child is really, truly hard. Um, But... At the end of the day, I think your subconscious really needs it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people never really reflect on the reality of their subconscious, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and if you really imagine yourself, imagine watching yourself. I don't know. Like I used to do this thing where I would, I would kind of imagine my, I would. Yeah. It if would, you were yeah. someone else. Watching, watching myself, myself. Yeah. yeah like i'm sitting down right now and i would imagine myself standing up and looking at myself mm-hmm. as i'm doing whatever it is that yeah. i was doing um so try it's a good practice yeah it's like do that. maybe that could be a practice like as you're living yeah. your life you know watch yourself as you do these things yeah um to just kind of observe um how you are um going through your day-to-day mm-hmm. and what are things that you don't like yeah you know, what things would you would you want to change? Yeah. Who are the people that, you know, that you enjoy? Yeah. And if who, you were looking who at your, you enjoy? If you were looking at your day-to-day, but you didn't know yourself, and you were, what are the things that you would judge about that person? About <laughs> yourself. I would be like, yeah. hmm, they seem to be doing that a bit too long or not enough of that. Yeah. And I'd be like, now put yourself in there. Okay. Yeah. 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 Or things that make you uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Or things that just make you tired. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes people get so, we get so used to doing certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't actually realize that, man, I don't like doing that, mm-hmm. right? You know, you don't actually realize that you don't like doing it, but and but then maybe afterwards you get super exhausted. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's something that we used to talk about. We used to say we we realized, right? You know how people always say introverts the, mm-hmm. uh, versus extroverts. Introverts like you know they don't like talking to people and mm-hmm. they're just quiet or whatever. And I used to think that I was an introvert, and maybe I am. I really honestly don't know. But what I realized. Is that whenever I find someone mm-hmm. who speaks my language, mm-hmm. who um, internalizes things the yeah. way that I do, that is surfing on like, your vibe, who, that is surfing on my vibe, yeah. I can talk all day. Yeah. Yeah. You got something in your ear. No, I stopped it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the first start, the first step in trying to live yeah. like your inner child yeah. kids are generally happy because they listen to themselves exactly you know? they listen to their intuition what their their needs yeah yeah like what you know like, what they like doing people what they like don't yeah. yeah right like because that person's giving me a weird weird energy that person just seems really oh, yeah they make me laugh kids who are like do you want to give her this do you want to say hello no I want to say hello to her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, well, the kid doesn't want to say hello. I'm yeah. like, you can't afford it. That's yeah. not what they want to do. Yeah. But we know? accept that with kids. But with adults, we forget that we should yeah. kind of see them as kids. We yeah. should tr- treat everyone like kids. Yes. And also their boundaries, right? Yeah. 
really. Yeah. And sometimes you get upset when people yeah. are, uh, have boundaries, but you don't do that when yeah. with kids, so with much babies. More Why? With kids. Yeah. Why? Because when the kid says think, no, that's a boundary. We think they're just <laughs> immature or inexperienced, but yeah. really they're just more in tune with themselves. Exactly. Yeah. They are more in tune with themselves and they just don't want to be in yeah. an uncomfortable situation. Yeah. 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 Be more like a baby. Be more like a baby. Yeah. Mañanas are yeah. smart. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's in Mañanas or Bambinos? I think Mañanas it's close, right? tomorrow, isn't it? See you Mañana? Oh, crap. Mañanas. Yeah, Bambinos. Yeah, bambino. Bambinos. bambinos. Yeah, be more like Bambinos <laughs> while Mañanas. Be more Bambinos. But that's, yeah. that's five lessons we got from yeah, the, the, peanut, pe- butter. the peanut Butter Falcon. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. And let us know uh, what you thought of those things that we took from the movie. Yeah. And if you've seen the movie too, what what stuff did you get from it? Yeah, what are the things did you get yeah. from that? Because I'm mean, yeah. Yeah, we're curious. Sure. We'd like yeah. to know. Until next time. Bye. Goodbye.